the oceans make our planet unique their mass movements and functioning make life possible everywhere on earth they stabilize climate provide food and habitats they even buffer against pollution Yet all these functions are being increasingly threatened by our reckless mismanagement of these vast expanses. The myriad of organisms that are responsible for weaving this majestic fabric of ecological networks are being perturbed, displaced, depleted, and sometimes led to extinction. To tackle these issues, we need to study marine ecosystems, but we face huge challenges due to the sheer size and inaccessibility of most marine habitats. Virtually all methods to explore the marine environment and its organisms are considerably more expensive, difficult and inaccurate than the systems used to assess biodiversity on continental land masses. This is why we're now looking at a new way to peer into the oceans. So eGNA has a really low environmental impact compared to other methods. The standardized methods for fish surveys often involve killing the fish. Environmental DNA does not involve killing the fish at all. So you're just taking, just taking water samples. And aside from the laboratory processing um, and plastic waste, there is very little environmental impact. Every living being leaves tiny fragments of life in its wake. Skin cells, eggs, blood, feces, all end up stirred in the ocean swells. All these fragments contain DNA, billions of particles ceaselessly released in the water that can tell us which organisms dwell and travel in a given section of the ocean. Marine environmental DNA. The project CDNA does exactly what the name says, essentially studies the environmental DNA in the oceans. And in order to do that, we explore the diversity of life using these fragments, essentially distributed from estuaries around the UK, from coastal water, shelf waters, all the way to Antarctic ecosystems. So we set out to harvest this biological treasure by sampling water in several coastal and shelf areas of the UK, as well as distant waters off Antarctica, and at the same time observed and collected species distribution and abundance data using traditional methods like zooplankton nets, trawls and visual observation. The molecular arsenal required to convert this environmental DNA from water collections into usable biodiversity data is sophisticated, yet increasingly fast and affordable. We were able to generate huge species inventories, which in most cases proved to be more exhaustive than those obtained with established traditional catch and see methods. Screening water um, for eDNA at various times, we can gain really useful insights into fish reproduction because there'll be a huge release of their DNA into the water as they undertake their spawning activity and their spawning migrations. And these migrations will be changing throughout the year and with different species. And we have such a sensitive method now that we can look at this in really precise detail. Thanks to projects like cDNA, we now know how to make the most of this wealth of molecules surrounding us how to collect them, how to handle them, and what information we can get from them. We may soon be ready to implement environmental DNA screening for several practical purposes, such as habitat quality monitoring, the detection of invasive species, the fluctuations of commercial fish stocks, the assessment of food web structures, and the list goes on. If this approach works in the way we think it does, then very soon it will be possible to coordinate network of marine biologists all over the world that will harvest the fragments of DNA everywhere to build reliable, sensitive, accurate maps of biodiversity quickly. These maps will be very important for the scientists, but also for policymakers. They will be our platform to understand how the changes in our ecosystems are taking place. The more we understand this, the more we will be prepared to face the consequences of this change. We sense that a gate has been unbolted. 
avenues of possibilities stem from this new field and hundreds of research teams are now sieving the oceans for these most informative DNA particles, mapping gradients of life over larger and larger stretches of our seas. Perhaps this advancement in biodiversity research will better prepare us to handle the rapid changes the Earth is facing.